Hi, it's Kernatex here with a series of videos about installing and building Linux from scratch 12.1. So the next iteration, the next version was released today. In fact, it was released in the early hours of this morning. And there's been um, a few changes uh, to packages mainly. I don't think there's been any particularly big structural changes. I just use little updates and so on, which we'll see. Um, in case you have not seen my videos before, just a little warning that I do record everything and that's for reference in case you wish to refer to what I've done to compare with what you've done if you're not getting the same results or something. Um, and I'm doing this mainly so that um, uh, as an aid to you if, you've, uh, if you're having trouble, um, a lot of videos I've seen on the internet, um, you'll see People do like the key parts and then the, the video jumps to the next key part and sometimes I'm left wondering what's gone in the middle. Um, and it may have been something key that wasn't actually recorded. So some of the information has been lost. So I, I, I do occasionally get people asking why, I've, you know, why I haven't cut bits out and that is the reason why. Um, of course, if you don't want to see everything building, which you probably don't want to most of the time, just skip forward on the video to, to the next bit that you're interested in. So um, I've landed at the home page of Linux from scratch here. Um, it's at www.linuxfromscratch, all of one word, .org. And um, in fact, I think it's gone to LFS. I think it takes you to, yes, it, oh, right, okay. So that's the actual landing page there. And you can either click on LFS up here or, or this link here. And it'll take you to this main Linux from scratch page, which gives you a quick overview of what LFS is about. And it's a, it's, um, well, uh, I'd say it's advantages also what's unique about it in that it's something, it's a distribution that's built from, um, instructions rather than built from packages that are installed. Um, you do have to install from packages, but the difference is the source packages, not the binary packages that have been pre-built and also who's who on the team. So quick history lesson, it was created about 20, nearly 25 years ago by Jared Beekmans as a way of learning about how a Linux system works. Um, and it's since been taken on by these other people. Uh, so we'll go in to see about that when we look at the manual itself. Um, so the best thing to do, first of all, is to go to, um, well, you can go to news and you can read about it there, what's the main changes. Um, you can see the main tool chain, which always gets an update. A couple of packages there have been updated. 43 other packages have been updated. There have been 230 commits to the book since the last version, which was six months ago. They're released every six months, every March and September. Um, I'm planning on doing something slightly different. Normally I just install the basic Linux from scratch, which uses a BIOS boot and the system V or system five, um, in its system. I'm going to have a go at doing the, um, UEFI boot this time, uh, with the system D, um, in it. Uh, way of uh, initializing the system. Um, now, th the reason I'm doing that is because I don't do it very often. I don't really use them myself. Uh, that, well, UEFI, I have to more and more now. Uh, the main reason is because it's just um, it's more work. It's more complication. When, when Linux from scratch is more about an educational tool, or primarily an educational tool, um, it's just stuff that gets in the way. But on on the other hand, you know, by, by going through these, you are learning a bit about UEFI and a bit about System D. They're, they're just um, things that I think complicate the end results. You know, if you want to get a Linux from scratch system up and running, there's just extra packages to build and more work, more time. Um, and also another reason I don't normally do them is the basic Linux from scratch is, just does involve a BIOS boot and a SysV uh, in it. 
Um, so like I said, I'm going to attempt to do this. Now, Linux from scratch, I normally do off the cuff. I don't normally have any notes um, because I do it, you know, so many times. Uh, I've done it so many times over the years as well. It's kind of, um, it gets a bit tedious to keep going through as a practice run and so on and making notes. And I think, well, the notes are just telling me what I already know. Um, but with System D and UEFI, it's a bit unusual for me. So again, I haven't made any notes with them. So we'll be going through, um, as you see, for the first time with 12.1. Um, so there's a chance that something might break or I might do something wrong, but I'm hoping that it'll be something not only that I learn from, but you'll learn from as a way of maybe how I uh, go about resolving issues that I encounter. So hopefully it'll be beneficial for you as well if that happens. Um, so let's go to download and which you can get to from that link actually. There's download and online links there and these relate to these two links here. So you can download um, the stable book there which you can read offline in various formats. If I go there you'll see there's a, a single page which has the whole book in which is extremely useful for searching for something. So for example if you want to find out what package is served by a particular binary for example um, so if you wanted to know what LSCPU was served by what package it's under you could go in there let's let's do that we'll have to wait a short while for the page to load it's a few megabytes I think so it's loaded now so if I do control F and then do LSCPU it's come up here and you can see it's it's in the content section of util Linux so straight away I know that util Linux is the package that contains the source uh, for LSCPU. So if, for example, I had a problem with that or I wanted to rebuild it for some reason, it's a good, good way of coming here um, to find out which, which package needs to be rebuilt. So I always find that extremely useful. The um, PDF I've used in the past, but I, I don't know what it's like now, but I used to find that it didn't copy and paste very well. Um, sometimes you get extra... Um, new line characters inserted and so on. The LFS book is the basic the layout you'll see. It's the individual pages in HTML form. So that's useful if you want to run your own local web server, which I do um, purely because my internet's a bit flaky sometimes. So just expand that. You'll get a 12.1 directory with the files in there. Just click on the, I think, index.html file. Um, and these last three will be downloading as we go through the build process. So there's no need to download those separately. Um, and I think, I believe, let me just check. I think they're contained actually within this tar file here with the manual. Um, uh, yeah, I can see the wget list is, yeah, it says just, just wget list. Is part of the manual tarball, but it doesn't look like the other two are. Um, but as I say, we'll be downloading these anyway to as part of the process going through and preparing for Linux from scratch. So that's where to download the book itself, if you wish to. Um, otherwise, just read it online, which is this other link here. And you can choose which version you'll be installing. So, um, yep, so the, the yeah, there's a, a page with a, any errata that appear, and I wouldn't expect to see any, being it's only been released about 10 hours ago. Um, and the security virus, advisories page just shows any vulnerabilities that have been released for any of the packages. So, again, everything's up to date. I wouldn't expect anything, at least for a minimum of a few days maybe. Um, and there's another link to the security advisories. Stable LFS, well that's the Linux from scratch book that I normally follow. And as I say, I'm not going to be following that one this time. Um, I'm going to be following the system D version. Don't click on development because that could be changing. Um, certainly if you read it after the 1st of March 2024, uh, it will have changed. It'll be the up-to-date live version so i'll be looking at this version here stable lfs system d version uh, 
Um, so that's uh, how I'll be reading and uh, working from the book. So the thing we've got to do next is to decide how we're going to install it. Now, normally I install it on a machine, bare, bare metal, I'd like to call it. Um, I find it's the most um, accurate way of doing things. Uh, again, fewer problems. Uh, I have done inside a virtual machine, but I found in the past that virtual machines, while they're extremely useful, can cause or present other problems in terms of drivers and getting the kernel to work and so on. So yes, while I understand a uh, virtual machine can be really handy, especially if you haven't got a second machine to play with, um, if you have got the ability to use an alternate machine, um, I thoroughly advise it. Otherwise, um, if you do use a virtual machine, although I won't be using it this time, I have done uh, installing Linux from scratch on a virtual machine a couple of times. The most recent was about a year ago. So if you go to my channel, um, you'll see, I think it was the last version of version 11, either 11.2 or 11.3, I built on a virtual machine. So uh, you can follow that for hints, for certainly for setting up the virtual machine if you need help there. But otherwise, the actual build should be more or less the same. Um, the only difference obviously being that the packages have been updated and some of the procedures might have just changed slightly, but not, not a great deal. Um, so yes, I'll be building on a real machine. As so, I'll also be building with UEFI. Um, the only reason I decided to do it with UEFI this time is because the machine I'm building on hasn't got any option for um, setting a compatibility boot mode. Um, but as I said, I said before, like it's something that I haven't done for quite a while to to boot with UEFI with Linux from scratch. So. Um, this kind of fulfills a couple of things for me. Um, and I guess also there's more and more people are going to be booting with UFI, so I guess it's going to help more people. Um, another thing we'll need is we'll need a host Linux from scratch to have actually running in the background and executing so that we can start to build the initial stages of Linux from scratch. Once those initial stages have been built, we can change into the um, initial stage which is called a true environment and we'll continue the final um, uh, version of Linux from scratch the final build will be from within that true environment so what I usually recommend to use as a host environment for building Linux from scratch is Gen 2 um, there's several reasons for that um, Firstly, Gen 2 is built from source as well, but it's just automated. So it's quite similar in, uh, to Linux from scratch in that respect. Uh, and therefore, the live USB or live uh, DVD image that I have will have all the tools you'll need to build Linux from scratch um, there and then. You won't need to have to go and fetch or download any other packages uh, within the live environment. It's, it'll already be there. Plus, if you download the latest live USB, all those packages will be up to date as well. So you won't have any issues there to try and get those packages up to date. Um, I used to recommend Endeavor OS um, as a live environment purely because Gen 2 had stopped building live USBs for a while. Um, and the previous one from, was from 2016, I think it was, and it was quite out of date. Um, Endeavor OS was good because, again, it had all the tools you needed to um, build Linux from scratch without having to install anything else. And it was a nice small image. It was less than two gigabytes, so it fit, it fit nicely on a, um, any USB that was two gigabytes or, or larger. Um, unfortunately, it's grown a little bit in size now. It's about the same size as the Gen 2 one. Um, so I can't really recommend that over Gen 2 and I would prefer Gen 2 anyway, as I say, because it is a, a distribution that's built from source anyway. 